Happy New Year everybody and Happy New Year to also my hair that doesn't seem to fixate on any cuts that I want. However, I hope that all of you had good holidays, whatever you guys celebrated. I hope everything went out okay with you and your families. I have understood that there are a lot of people that don't really like the holidays so for those people I say they are over and now it's a new year and it's a new you if you want um, so yeah it's a new me but before it's a new me I have to wrap up what I read in December and even though I'm a little bit late to the party I just wanted to bring you this new thingy and quickly wrap up everything that I read in December so in December I read major ebook Bonanza. I just flipped the fuck and decided to like I'm going to read and read and read and uh, it's going to be ebooks and very small novellas because I don't have time for anything else. I also read some comics and mangas but pretty much everything that I read was kind of short except one or two things because I spent the entirety of that month working. Um, still working uh, but with a little bit more of a ability to do other things. So, let's get into this. First of all, for the comics, we're going to start with issue 3 of Parker Girls by Terry Moore. I've been reading this with my boyfriend. I got this to my house in order to present to you guys instead of putting pictures here. Um, this is really great, but if you haven't read Stranger in Paradise or other of Terry Moore's series, because he's building like a world of it, you won't know the major characters and you won't know what's going on most of the time. So it's, it's really a series for the people that already know and love his works, which on one side it's bad and the other side is pretty cool because it's creating a whole entire world. I obviously enjoy it a lot, my boyfriend did too. So yeah, if you are at all familiar with Terry Moore, it might be a good one to pick up. Then I finally finished this Joker series and I read issue 15 of The Joker by James Italian IV, Common Collie, Smith and Prianto. And it was a nice ending. This is basically a Gordon story and kind of a noir detective-esque thing. However, Joker obviously appears as one of Gordon's worst nightmares and one of, uh, like, the thing that makes him want to cross the line and kill someone is the Joker for everything that he has done to him, his family, and all of the people in Gotham. So it's kind of like this journey that Gordon takes in order to find the Joker because he's being like framed for something and we don't know if he did it or not and it's like finding the Joker and decided if he wants to kill the Joker or if he just wants to bring him in to prison again. I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I have to say. I should have read it sooner. Uh, now the momentum is gone, but I enjoyed it. Then I read issue 11 of The Nice House on the Lake by Jem Sennin IV, Alvaro Martinez Bueno and Jordi Belair. And this one was mind fucking blowing. I am expecting almost near perfectness from issue 12, which is going to finish this mini series, uh, because if not, the momento was created for nothing. I am absolutely loving all of these. More questions were raised. I don't know how they're going to answer it in a short issue, but I cannot, cannot wait. This is incredible. It's such a great series. Then the first book that I finished in the year was Dead Works by Brooklyn Dean and this is the third book in the anti-gospel series, if I am remembering correctly. I have done a review for Deification, which is the first one and I will link it up above. Um, I have talked about Grief in the Spirit, which is the second and I, I read Dead Works or I read Dead Works last month. I am absolutely in love and entranced with Brooklyn Dean's writing. She writes incredible prose, incredible characters, character motivation, character ev evaluation, like, it's just, wow. Everything is great, everything is amazing. The questions about um, religion, the questions about living your life, what is, um, like, can you live it by yourself, or is everything predestined to happen, and new characters and old characters that are presented to you in a very different way than they have been for the other books. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I am a lucky one to be able to be reading the fourth book before release date, however I'm not going to reveal anything about it since Brooklyn hasn't revealed herself anything, uh, so it's not correct for me to do so, but I, I really want to know, I really want to know more and where this is going. 
Then I tried to do the mini Aurelium readathon kind of thing that happened in December. And for that one, I read three books because I just went to one store. It was a shady, creepy store. And I just went there and decided it was going to be my store. Um, so first I read The Creeper by A.M. Shine for one of the challenges. I don't remember which one, but I fulfilled them all. Uh, and I was actually very surprised with The Creeper since it was a book that Ned Galley had offered to me, I was like, okay, it might not be a big thing, a big deal, because, I mean, I got approved for it, so it might not be a big deal. It was great. It was creepy. It wasn't exactly five stars, but it was like four something. It was really creepy. The name is really an exact um, taste of what you're going to get, if you know what I mean. And it's just, it's about this old like Irish legend of this creeper that if you see him three times he comes he gets closer and closer to you and it's like a deformed creature and after the third time you disappear presumably you die um and it's great it's about these two like this historian and this archaeologist and they go to this uh village where the legend started and they are trying to figure out some stuff and it's just it's pretty great and filled with tension then I read two books by Brianna Morgan that have to do with each other, so I'm going to talk about them. I read The Trick or Treater and Other Stories, which is a compilation of short stories by Brianna Morgan. It was pretty great. I really enjoyed the title story, but more than that, I enjoyed some of the stories that were in the middle, since Brianna Morgan was kind of exploring a lot of relationships, a lot of locations and a lot of situations that can bring the creeps to you. It was fun, it was nice, it was short, I really liked it. And then I read A Trick or Treater Christmas, a holiday horror story, which was also by Rihanna Morgan, and it was a specific only story about the trick or treater, which is basically this creature that you can ask one wish for him, but you have to give two sacrifices, a person that you hate and a person that you love. And after that, games will be played, and here, my love for horror-y Christmas things came alive. I never thought that I would like to read horror Christmassy titled books. And look at me, I loved it. And that influenced kind of what I read next. I'm talking about The Ritual. This little short thing is less than 30 pages. This is by Michael R. Goodwin. Uh, and this is a holiday folk horror story. Not saying too much because it only has 30 pages and you should get into it as blind as possible, but it's about this ritual that happens in a village. And it is described to you and it's one of the most horrific but awesome things that I've read in a long, long time. I really loved it. I know that there are more tiny little short stories set in that village setting with those people. I want more. This plays with the tropes of Christmas, but in a terrifying new way, in a terrifying new village. If you want, grab it. It's great. Michael Goodwin is an indie author, and I cannot wait to read more of his works and to support him. Then, after I finished that Aurelium Readathon thing, I could not stop reading novellas. And so I deep dived into another author, and I read two things by that author, and that is Caitlin Marceau, if I'm pronouncing the name correctly. I hope I am. But I read This Is Where I Talk Things Out by Caitlin Marceau, obviously. This is kind of a misery-like story, but overviewing the relationship of a mother and daughter and how toxic that relationship is from the mother's part, but also how the daughter kind of feels like she hates her mom. And so how they try to get together for this weekend to talk things out and like bring a solution to the relationship that they have and how that fails fucking miserably. The mother is one of the most like terrifying people that I've ever read about because there are a lot of people like her. So it's kind of like uh, you could see what was going on perfectly. It was crystal fucking clear to me what was going on. Still creepy as shit. I loved it, really loved it. It's a very short novella, you should read it. I think Caitlin Marceau is a new writer to just keep your eye on. She's an indie author and it's just incredible. 
also by Caitlin Marceau, I read an, a little novelette that was available on the Darklit Press website, which I'm going to try and leave link if I remember to do so, and that is 23 McCormick Road. This is a little, little, little short story of kind of a like a hunted house that has to do with this ghost. Uh, two women, they are going to have a, a child and they just move into this house and then one of them starts being like feeling like she's being followed and watched at every moment and it's a ghost story perfectly done in such a short amount of time. I really liked it. It wasn't as creepy and gruesome as this is where it all things out but it was pretty pretty great i really liked it it was more of a feeling kind of one you know it's more like i can see what's going on and i really want to you know to see the ghost and and know for myself i really like it i am going to read more of caitlin marceau's works absolutely I have also read some manga, I'm going to make a little bit of a stop on the ebook so you don't get tired. I read some manga which was The Ancient Maga's Bride Volume 16 by Kore Yamazaki and uh, yeah sure we are continuing the second arc which is being really really big. I like this manga but it's starting to get to a point where they come out like so in a, such a long period of time and I don't reread them and now I'm just kind of like okay I'm liking it but are we going somewhere? The end of this though was really cool and I cannot wait for volume 17 but I do hope that we wrap up this arc ASAP because it's kind of stinking already. Then we have Children of the Whales volume 20 by Abby Umeda which is kind of like the same thing. I love the art style, I like Children of the Whales and the way that it talks about emotions and people living together. However, it's already time to reach to a stop. I'm hoping that there's only like one or two more volumes left on this because honestly, um, I don't see the point now. I really don't see the point. But yeah, if it was enjoyable, yeah, sure, it's just pointless. Then I did read Be Very Afraid of Kanako Inuki by Kanako Inuki herself. Um, supposedly the queen of horror manga. Uh, I have done a review for this, so I won't talk a lot about this, but this is kind of like an anthology short story collection of some of the works of Kanako Inuki and she like being introduced to us uh, readers of English manga. And it was pretty great. I really enjoy her style. I think it's a very... Um, Creepy style, it has children with big eyes and horrible things happening, more like a realistic sort of horror, even though there are supernatural situations to it. But the horror of this is like sadness and uh, bullying and nostalgia and old age and children. It's kind of more realistic to a point than, say, Junji Ito. So it was very enjoyable. Check my review if you want to know more about it. Then, of course, I have to shout out Mason from Mason in the Dark by writing The Bleeding Ground Volume 7, Dark Omens and Big Dreams. Because, holy shit, he made me cry on that volume like six minutes in and I was already bawling my eyes out. It was incredible. It was great. I really liked the ending because my fucking ship just sailed. <laughs> so I was very happy about that. Mason is an incredible creative. If you're not following him, I will leave it linked somewhere, but you have to. He is incredible. He's the best on author tube right now. So creative, like poetry, funny things, uh, wrap-ups, reviews, and his own writing and narration. Like, it's incredible how he does so much. It, it, it's like, pff, I love him. I really love him, and I think you guys should love him too. And then, finally, my final ebook of the year of 2022 was Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke. This one was creepy but it wasn't as good as I was hoping it to be. It was it was nice, it was cool, but it was more of a like, okay, so what are you going to do to get rid of this? And it's basically the story about this dude. He is in a store and he sees a child like screaming with the mother and the mother looks like half dead and he accepts a fucking candy by this child, this creepy ass child that he describes as creepy. He accepts a candy from the child eats it and then apparently the whole world is rearranged because this child is like a demon, an ancient sort of Norwegian demon that kind of just wants to eat candy and uh, fuck up the life of this father. And 
it, he knows he's not the father of the child, but nobody else in the world knows. And like his girlfriend that he had, apparently they had broken up, but they hadn't, you know, things like that. The kid rearranged his life to like fuck him up. And so it's more of a feeling of, okay, this kid is creepy, but we already know that he's like an entity of some sorts. So it's like, how are you going to defeat this motherfucker? What are you going to do? What, you know? And it's not as much as, oh no, what is the kid? You know, who is the kid? Like, you already know. I was expecting more, like, cold sweats and creepiness. And what I got was, I'm going to beat the shit out of this kid because he's like a, a demon. Like, dude, do something. Kill the motherfucker. You know, it, it was... It was strange, even though the ending had the plot twist, which was a bit... I don't know. <laughs> but it was fun, it was a fun read, and I have to read more by Killian Patrick Burke, because he's so well talked about, I think I didn't start with the right one. I will see. So that's going to be all for today, thank you so much for watching, if you like it leave a like or subscribe, and tell me down below if you've read any of these or plan to read any of these. That's going to be all for today, and happy readings to you all. Bye!